I'm Kim Coventry, Executive Director of the Richard H. Driehaus Foundation. On behalf of Richard Driehaus and the board of the foundation, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to the opening session of the Chicago Tradition and Architecture, Inspiration or Artifact, a two-day symposium organized to coincide with the Chicago Architectural Biennial. Many of you here have been recipients of uh, Driehaus Foundation funding. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for your work. We recognize that it is only through you and your organizations that the foundation can, can succeed in meeting its goals. Those of you who are unfamiliar with the foundation, it was established 32 years ago by Richard Driehaus, my boss, under Richard's vision and guidance, the foundation has distributed more than $100 million, most of it in general operating support, to organizations in Chicago. Richard, I like to say, keeps us all in uncharted territory all the time. This symposium provides a good example. What most people don't know is that there's a team of dedicated people behind the scenes uh, at other Driehaus entities that make rare events like this possible. They support the foundation on a day-to-day -day basis, allowing, allowing those of us who work at the foundation to focus very narrowly on grant making. It's a real luxury, and I'd like to acknowledge them now by asking anyone who works for a Driehaus entity including the foundation, or serves as a consultant to stand and be recognized. Today, the foundation works to move the dial in four areas, the largest of which is focused on the built environment where we aim to ensure that Chicago's historic fabric, in all its different styles, continues to resonate and thereby inform, in perpetuity, the meaning of this particular place. Among other initiatives to improve the built environment, we support those that preserve and reinforce sense of place, a complex, multi-sensory phenomenon which we all experience when we recognize that a given place is special and particular as opposed to being merely a location. Sense of place can apply to whole cities as I believe it does in Chicago. And here, this sense of place has more than usual to do with architecture. Chicago is recognized as the birthplace of modern architecture. To appreciate the extent of this achievement, we must also recognize that modern architecture is broader than any one style. It includes not only the tall steel frame office buildings that first appeared in the loop, but also the single family suburban houses for which Chicago architects created a distinct prairie style. Modern architecture also includes the classical ensembles of public buildings that first appeared, in this country at least, around the court of honor at the World's Columbian Exposition, as well as the coordinated tradition of city beautiful urban planning to which such ensembles belong, which can also be traced to the Columbian Exposition. It is all of these achievements collectively that have given Chicago its especially rich legacy of architecture and planning as the place where so much of our modern built environment first took shape. We have made this legacy the subject of this symposium because we recognize that attitudes about past condition plans for the future. This is especially true where the built environment is concerned because buildings take so much time and money to build, which means that present experience is inevitably filtered through surroundings that also constitute a living record of the past. How this living record should inform future building is likely too complex 
a cultural question to support final agreement or definitive conclusions, though I expect you'll hear plenty of proposals from our speakers. The fact remains that we must act provisionally and without final answers where the built environment is concerned because we are forever altering it to suit our changing needs. Again, that these needs are changing against a backdrop of conflicting priorities and viewpoints is natural. Cities, by definition, are places where competing interests converge and must be negotiated. American-built culture, moreover, is characterized by enduring oppositional views on conservation and innovation, the desire to preserve existing conditions, and the desire to make new ones. We believe that putting these values up for debate, as this symposium will do, is the best way to build consensus around a framework for maintaining and improving the built environment. In this symposium, symposium, even conflicting viewpoints will share a common point of departure because all of tomorrow's speakers will engage Chicago's architectural legacy through specific examples. Finally, the Chicago Architecture Biennial would, seemed uh, to be an ideal opportunity to undertake an examination of Chicago's architectural legacy with eight established authorities on the subject. This is our latest show of support, but the foundation also provided the earliest funding for the biennial in 2013 in the form of a grant to the city's Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events to explore the possibility of organizing a Chicago biennial. Thanks to all of you for spending tonight and tomorrow with us in what we hope will be a robust examination of the Chicago tradition of architecture and its relevancy today. Tomorrow will be a long day, a sort of marathon, if you will, being run in this elegant room just before another gets, way, gets underway outside. I believe it will be a memorable two days and I suggest that you buckle in. Now, just a couple of procedural announcements. Please make sure that you've turned off your cell phones. Uh, please remember that if you um, are seeking AIA credits for having attended, you should sign up outside. Uh, there are two sheets, one for today and one for tomorrow. And finally, we're filming the symposium, and each talk will be available on YouTube and on the Foundation's website, um, we hope, um, late next week.